Jeez. <laughs> okay, so here we go right here. This is the last tattoo. Um, and this is a very interesting one. I want to highlight this one specifically, not only because it's a cover up, but because of the meaning of the tattoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to walk through this tattoo, um, showing some examples of putting meaning into symbols okay. in modern times today, along with someone's life and uh, how things happen. So this gentleman came in and he had this tattoo that you see. It's, I think, an Ohm symbol or Air. Aries or I don't yeah, know. It looks it, like you know Egyptian. one of those um, zodiac signs. Oh, but it's mm -hmm. very thick, as you can see. It's it's very thick, mm -hmm. and he wanted a full sleeve. So in order to create a full sleeve out of this, I've seen tattoos where they just blacken it out, or um, you know, cover it real. Yeah, real, like real dark. Just cover just, it. Yeah. And I kind of want to explain my thought process in this, like seeing a. Um, full tattoo. Uh, do the the next because that's not that's the last one. So the next one would be the full sleeve there. Okay, so so this tattoo right here um, turn into this. Now this is the full sleeve. Oh wow! And I want to show the full sleeve because as you could see, the bold lines in the tattoo that we saw before was taken throughout the whole tattoo. You oh. have to you have to make bold lines on the top where the tattoo was, but also down to the wrist. I mean, if you didn't, then your eyes automatically are gonna go to the top and say, "Why is that bold and the yeah, rest isn't?" That makes sense. And if you bold everything out, mm -hmm. everything has to be composed well and balanced well, where it's pleasing to the eye mm -hmm. and doesn't draw attention to the shoulder or or anything. Mm -hmm. So here's another uh, view of the tattoo. And as we talk about this tattoo, I want to talk about meaning. So I don't know if you could see it in this view. So as we're talking, he's from Hawaii. He's Hawaiian. Um, he's been out here and he wanted he he's in security. OK. You know, he's actually did that his whole life. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, think, I think I know. Yeah, yeah this actually, <laughs> this gentleman um, is the man. right? Here. Yeah, he's he's done a lot of things. I actually I didn't ask permission to say his real story, but. Um, it's really interesting. Maybe, maybe later. Yeah, I'll let you know who this guy is because it's pretty crazy. But regardless, um, as I was designing the tattoo, let me just say every little piece of this tattoo has meaning. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna point to right here in this area. As I was drawing and designing it in the first designing stages, um, I designed his near his elbow this kind of diamond shape or okay. star shape yeah. right right in the, in middle, the middle area mm -hmm. and then as i was doing his bicep and his tricep area these circles were forming okay and when i design i design through feeling mm -hmm. i i design through flowing and then what i feel uh based on his story so we talked for two hours before an hour you know so as i kept doing it I don't ever design like that so i would erase it a couple times yeah and then i would i would redraw it mm -hmm. and Right away, what popped out to me was an owl, oh, wow. like a face of an owl. Like this would be the beak right in the center. And then the two eyes, the large eyes on the bicep and the tricep. And I don't know if yeah. you can see it in this view, but that's what kept popping up. And and this has happened in the past before when designing tattoos. Yeah. And when that idea comes to my mind, automatically, I I have a feeling it's supposed to be here. Mm hmm. So automatically I asked him, what's your amakua? And mm -hmm. amakua in Hawaiian is your like guardian, your family yeah. guardian, protector. Um, and he said, the pueo, oh. which is the owl, yeah. which which just confirms because I've done this with shark. I've done this with like gecko, all, all these different things. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that's why. So that's why it's designed like this. You'll never go through any tattoo I've ever done and see this setup mm -hmm. ever. Um, so it was meant to be. And that's his amakua. So right there in the center is his amakua. But every other piece um, has meaning. You know, he loves the ocean. That's why you see the scales, the fish scales on the bottom, mm -hmm. genealogies in there. I mean, everything. If you go to the next photo, um, you know, he has a fish hook on the inside. Uh, the shark's teeth on the bottom. Um, now, this is a very interesting story. We're going to finish it off. Um you know, with this story. So in this next photo, you could see the inside of his arm. There's a different symbol and it's right down here on the inside of his arm. 
and it's going up and across up and across i gotta oh, get this yeah. right it's going up and across near his armpit down to his elbow so what that represents is fish with their head in the water oh now does that look like fish i mean not head in the water head in the sand does that does that look like that i see the fish yeah so it's like fish yeah um, the normal fish pattern but actually can you go to this okay so as you could see it's it goes like this, right? Yeah. And the normal fish pattern would be like that. So on his arm, he specifically wanted fish with their head in the sand. And there's specifically seven of them. Now, obviously, this isn't a traditional way of doing things, but... I had to improvise based on his story and what he specifically requested. So he had seven fish in the water. As you could see, this would be the fish. I hope that makes sense. Now it makes does, sense. Does it that look sense. like it now? Yeah. All right. So as you can see, the seven fish in the water. Let's look at the tattoo again. Oh, wow. Okay. So what, what this represents is uh, when this when this gentleman was six years old um, when this gentleman was six years old mm -hmm. he was uh, rushed to the hospital because he hardly could breathe and he remembers it he remembers it clearly he hardly could breathe he was rushed to the hospital he was diagnosed with something he said he remembered called the New York flu um, I try to look it up. I can't find anything, but yeah. but there was another name for it specifically. Mm -hmm. But it was a blood clot in his throat. Oh wow! And Ow. and he and it was getting larger, and he couldn't breathe. Okay, and he was rushing to surgery. Now because of that, mm -hmm. um, the doctors let his parents know that he uh, there was seven people. Mm -hmm. There was seven people diagnosed with this, or six people diagnosed with this. He's the seventh that mm -hmm. they know of. And they all died from this. Oh, wow. They all died from it. Yeah, so everybody died but him. Everyone died. So they're basically saying he, you know, his chances of mm -hmm. this is not good. Oh, no. Um, so he went into surgery and he came out of surgery, right? Yeah. And he survived it. When he survived it, and now this is in Hawaii, and his grandmother, his mother, they were all very like, um, I don't want to say religious, but into culture. Yeah. And they're very spiritual. Mm-hmm. He, we want to get him on the podcast to yeah, talk in, stories yeah. because He'll he has be some Hawaiian stories. Night marchers, I mean, everything from lights and, I mean, everything. But regardless, he comes home, but this is the story. When he comes home, mm -hmm. he looks in his fish tank. They had a saltwater fish tank that he, he loved playing with the fish. He was so close to the fish. And when he came home, all the fish were buried in the sand, all of them. They all died. What? They were all dead. And their tails were up. See, the odd thing is, is when fish die, they either float yeah. or they're just hanging out on the bottom. All these fish were buried tail up in the sand. And when he asked his grandma, "What? Look at the fish. What happened?" His grandma just said, "A life for a life. They, oh, they gave wow. their life for you." Now, this, you That's know, deep. it's deep. That and, hit me. And, yeah. and this is culture. Yeah. This yeah. is culture, and this is what really happens. Mm -hmm. um, I asked him, "Well, why the fish?" Of all things, why the fish, yeah. you know? And he said, oh, I love the fish. He loved the fish so much that as a five, six-year-old, before bath, sometimes, maybe like two, <laughs> three times in a week, yeah. he would sneak a fish out of the fish tank. He would put it in his waistband right here in his underwear, <laughs> and he'd hide it from his parents. He'd go in the bath. They'd make a bath for him. He'd wait till his mom leaves. Then he'd throw the fish in the water. And he'd swim. He let That's the fish cool. swim with them. Yeah. And every time the mom at the end of the bath would put the water down, mm -hmm. she'd see the dead fish <laughs> on the bottom and get them in trouble. Um, he didn't really realize like a saltwater fish can't go in the fresh water, uh, you know. But yep. <laughs> he loved the fish so much. So I think that connection was made. Mm -hmm. And um, so he wanted seven fish because he was the seventh person in the you know that in that story. Damn, that that's beautiful, that. man. Um, and you can still see the scar and everything. But hopefully we get him on. He will. He'll come but on. But that tattoo, once again, was a cover-up. Um, here's a quick before and after uh, of the cover-up. 
picture. Ooh. Um, and basically that centerpiece, that's that whole centerpiece is mana or the universe and energy surrounding yeah. the universe. Um, and like once again, it's just working with what they have mm -hmm. and being pleasing to the eye, you know, allowing it to be pleasing to the eye. Man, that, I can't even see it. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's different. It's it's something that I want. I just want to share this because I see a lot of cover ups that mm -hmm. um, I wish I had photos um, to show. But a lot of cover ups where they just go over things. Yeah. And they allow it to pop through. You know, they allow mm -hmm. the old tattoo to pop through the new tattoo and um, and just let it go. And I want to let everyone know we'll get creative and try and think of ways that you can do it. Like Instead this, of just you know? blacking it out. Yeah. And also, like, once again, it's really important that if you're going to have bold lines like that, mm -hmm. go over the bold lines. Try to keep as met as much skin as you can. So as you could see, even underneath that that symbol where the line is, I kept that white. It's yeah. really important to keep as much white as you can um, and carry it through the whole piece. Yeah. So that's it. 